Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk all about mixing in mono. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what the technique is and then also a load of benefits and drawbacks of using this technique as opposed to just mixing in stereo. The reason I'm making this video is because it's been very highly requested, but it's also quite a controversial topic. It was noticed in my mixing start to finish video that I didn't mix in mono on that particular occasion. So this led to a bit of a discussion and I thought that I actually had quite a lot of ideas and thoughts to share about this topic that I haven't seen other people discussing. So let's waste no time and get right into it. I'm going to start by briefly discussing the differences between stereo and mono and also this mixing in mono technique. So if you're already very familiar with that stuff, please just skip ahead to the next chapter marker or this time um, so that I don't bore you with information you probably already know. However, stereo is how we traditionally and normally listen to music. It's where you have a left and a right channel. These can be two speakers like that, or they could be a headphone or even most smartphones these days have a left and a right channel. These two channels allow us to hear a right, center, and left stereo image because anything that is recreated exactly the same in the left and right sounds like it's coming from right in front of you. So when you hear a kick drum or a snare coming from right in the middle of the soundstage, it's actually just because it's an identical waveform coming out of both the right and left speakers or headphones. Anything that sounds wider than the center is something that has been panned either to the left or to the right. So maybe we have a guitar on the left and a piano on the right, something like that. This can also be achieved with sort of stereo imaging techniques where you try to create a difference between the left and right channels or even left and right EQ differences can make you perceive a stereo width. So that's how we normally listen to music in stereo. However, mono is when you take both of these channels and you sum them together and then you divide by two, so you half them, which sounds a little bit strange, but the reason for this is that if you have a kick drum on the left and a kick drum on the right and you sum them together into mono, that signal is going to be twice as loud. So we half it so that it still sounds the same volume. I'll go into a few more details about this later, but basically your wide stereo mix will now sound like everything is coming from right in front of you. Even if it was panned hard right or hard left, it's gonna sound very thin and sort of centered in front of you. Mixing in mono is where you take that stereo mix and you listen to it in mono whilst you're mixing. So it's still stereo, but you're summing it all together. And you can do this on your DAW's master fader or on your audio interface or monitor controller, or you can even get a speaker that just sums everything together. But however you do it, you're still editing a stereo mix, but while you're mixing, you can only hear it in mono. It seems that a lot of people think mixing in mono is sort of a secret weapon and an incredible tool to get professional sounding mixes, while a whole lot of people also think that it's a complete waste of time and you shouldn't bother with it. So let's now talk about the claimed benefits and also some of the drawbacks of mixing in mono. One of the biggest benefits of mixing in mono is that it helps you set your levels more easily when compared to mixing in stereo. So the idea is that with everything folded on top of each other, it's very easy to hear when a snare is poking out too loud or when a guitar part is too quiet or too loud. It's all very obvious, whereas in stereo, uh, supposedly, this information gets a little bit lost and you can trick yourself with levels by panning. This seems to make perfect sense because it sort of narrows your focus. However, remember that sum we talked about when we said it's the left and right channels added together divided by two. This means that in your center channel, so everything that was the same on the left and the right, it is very easy to set the levels. However, if you had a hard panned guitar where it's only present on the left hand side, and there's no guitar on the right. Once you add those together, you've got a guitar and nothing divided by two. So now in mono, your guitar is actually gonna be, well, it could be anything up to half as quiet. It could be six dB lower, depending on how far you pan it. Which means that if you set your levels perfectly in mono, you bring that guitar up so you can hear it. If you press that mono button again to turn it back to stereo, that guitar is gonna be now far too loud. So you're going to have to do your volume balance twice. You're gonna to have to balance it in mono and balance it in stereo. So it's just another consideration to think about. One sort of foolproof way to set levels or, or something that I think many engineers find helpful, whether you're mixing in mono or stereo, is to just turn the levels all the way down. 
So to the point where if someone was trying to have a conversation with you, you wouldn't be able to hear the music. And if you don't have loudspeakers like this, a technique that really helps me is uh, playing it through headphones, just propping the headphones open and putting it on your desk and turning the volume all the way down. It's almost like you have a small a pair of studio monitors there. It should become very apparent if something is far too loud or if something just disappears entirely. It's something that's helped me a lot. It's a technique I picked up from a friend and a mentor and I hope it can help you too. The next benefit to mixing in mono is frequency masking. If you fold everything into the center, now you can much more easily hear overlapping frequencies. So if you had a synth part on the left and another synth part on the right, they sound separate. You don't really need to worry about what frequency content is there. If you fold those on top of each other, you're gonna hear issues and clashes. I don't know where those are gonna be, but you're probably gonna hear some problems. So the idea is that um, you can unmask those frequencies and then pan them and then you'll have even more space in the mix. Now I would say this does have a lot of merit, it makes sense, but I would say because probably 99% or more of people will only listen to your music in stereo. I mean, I don't have the exact figures, but almost everyone will choose to listen in stereo if they have the choice. I would say instead of worrying about whether something on the left masks something on the right when folded into mono, maybe just solo just the left or just the right channels and check to see whether your backing vocals on the left clash with the guitar on the left. That's probably a lot more important than worrying about if they clash with something on the right. Now, this sort of phasing issue between the two channels, um, they say that if you get this right in mono, that your music will translate much better to clubs, PA systems, maybe it's being played in a restaurant or a shop. But if you are lucky enough to have your music played back in any of those sort of mono uh, formats, there's many more things to worry about than mono compatibility. Really, you want to be making sure the true peaks and the mastering's done right, the loudness. You should also be checking to see if it encodes into a compressed format better. These are all things that are probably more important than pure mono compatibility. However, this does take us on to the third benefit of mixing in mono, which I completely agree with, and this is that it helps you sort out polarity and phase issues. So in short, if you have a bass and a kick, it's generally best to make sure that they're both pushing the speakers out at the same time. Uh, if the polarity is off or they're out of phase, it means that your bass is gonna be pushing the loudspeaker out, the kick's gonna be pulling it back in at that crucial transient. So you can sort of zoom in very close to a waveform and check this out um, and, and sort of visually see it, but it's something you wanna get used to hearing for. Uh, and especially if you have, say, two microphones on a snare drum, it's really important that they're in phase if you want that to sort of cut through the mix. However, you can usually do this in stereo and mono anyway, because most of the signals that need to be in phase are your center channel anyway. So your kick, bass, snare, those sorts of things. They're usually gonna be centered anyway. So if summing everything to mono helps you hear that, then brilliant. And this is the way that I use mono when mixing. I use it to fix those issues. I fold everything into mono, take a quick listen, and I use it as a tool to fix and sort of diagnose any of those issues. And then I just go back to mixing in stereo. So I completely agree with this one. The next benefit that people talk about is that it improves your critical listening skills. So having everything folded to mono is helping you identify all of the issues I've listed. So any phase, polarity issues, volume, tonal balance issues. I would agree to an extent, narrowing your focus and listening to just one variation or version of the mix does help in the same way that you can improve your listening skills by soloing only the low end or, or say everything below 400 hertz and really listening in just for that kick bass and sort of low mids. I've actually made a few videos about improving your listening skills and really hearing for compression and EQ. And in those videos, I do exactly the same thing. I just show a small part of the mix or I solo something so that you can really hone your listening skills in on that little uh, particular part of the mix. But I would recommend if you want to improve your listening skills, I wouldn't just fold everything to mono. I'd probably keep things in stereo and practice particular listening skills. So really solo bands of frequencies and learn what different frequencies sound like, what different attack times and release times on a compressor sound like, really sort of get your ears dialed into that stuff as opposed to worrying just about stereo and mono. And I do have a few other videos which I'll link below 
uh, which should help improve your listening skills. One more issue of mixing in mono is that if you're applying any sort of stereo effects, either during the production or during the mixing stage, so reverbs, delays, especially things like ping pong delays, it's gonna be almost impossible to set those properly in mono. So you will have to switch back out to stereo, then back to mono, and it just adds a sort of another layer of confusion. You'll also have to remember that when you're referencing and using reference tracks during mixing, you're going to have to listen to those in mono as well, which might be strange because you're probably not used to listening to your favorite songs in mono because most of us will listen almost all of the time in stereo to those songs. There's just two more things I want to talk about and the first is many people um, say that they mix in mono, they, you know, they, they try the technique, they've mixed for a couple of hours in mono, they hit the mono button again to turn everything back to stereo and their mix sounds better than they ever could have imagined. And if that's working for you, please do it. I'm not here to tell you not to do that. But what I would say is, imagine you listen to your mix with a big low pass filter on it and you mixed like that for two or three hours and then you took the filter off. You would be amazed by how much high frequency there was, how much the mix just opened up and came to life. So it's very important when you're comparing these sort of before and after differences that you also just keep listening to reference tracks, previous mixes that you've worked on, other songs that you like, just to make sure that you're not being tricked by the fact that you've maybe limited uh, your what you're listening to for a while. But I know that this technique works for thousands and thousands of engineers, so I'm not here to tell anyone uh, that it does or doesn't work. And the final thing I wanted to talk about, which I think could be a lot more useful than just listening in mono, is listening to your music in different formats. So when I master, I sometimes do check in mono because I think it's important just to know what it will sound like. But as well as checking in mono, I will export it to MP3s of all different uh, bit rates. And I'll also run it through some different encoding uh, simulation softwares to check what it's going to sound like if someone plays it back at an incredibly low quality MP3. And that often reveals so much more to me than when I do that mono check. It can often reveal problems in the high end that I didn't even know were problems until you try and compress it and crush it into a terrible MP3 format. So it's just an idea that if you're gonna check in mono, why not check in lots of different situations as well? Why not check just the right, just the left, or just the sides, just the center channel, that sort of thing. Um, remember that you've got loads of different tools at your disposal and you can use all of them. So that's everything I wanted to cover in the video, but please do share your thoughts. I know there's other aspects and elements to this that I've probably missed. So share your experiences with this technique and let us all know. Thank you very much for staying with me so long in this video and I hope you have a great week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.